this. Let's go to the Gospel of Luke, chapter 5. The Gospel of Luke, chapter 5. On one occasion, while the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, and he saw two boats by the lake. But the fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. Getting into one of the boats, which was Simon's, he asked him to put out a little from the land. He sat down and taught the people from the boat. And when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. And Simon answered, Master, we toiled all night and took nothing, but your word I will let down the nets. And when they had done this, they enclosed a large number of fish, and the nets were breaking. They signaled to the partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both the boats, so they began to sink. But when but when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down on Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish that they had taken. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on you will be catching men. And when they had brought the boat to land, they left everything and followed him. Andrew and Simon, two brothers, and through the Holy Spirit and prophetic word, the time had come for the Messiah to arrive. And as they were listening to the prophetic words by John the Evangelist, and they liked to draw near to him as they were baptized the water a baptism which was for repentance of sins but at some point John the Baptist hears the Lamb of God taking the sins of the world he showed the son God Jesus and Nazarene the one who had come earlier to John the Baptist himself to be Baptist the one who was sinless as he was submitted to the will of God as he executed all the justice of God Jesus And they heard a voice from heaven. This is my beloved son. Because he obeyed my word. To come to be baptized. Uh, baptism of repentance. And the Holy Spirit. And the prophetic word of the Lord was revealed. To John who told him. on whomever you see the Holy Spirit to come down on him and remain with them and that's my mission and that was the mission of John the Baptist to show who was going who was the anointed of God and Andrew heard this I don't know if he believed it but certainly he was He, whether he believed it or not, we don't know. But 
he pointed out to Peter, here's the Son of God, the Anointed of God, the Messiah. And as he looked at him, he said, and Christ said, you are Simon, son of Jonah, you will be named Peter, which is interpreted to mean a rock from Simon, which means hay, was gonna be, which means a rock, Peter. Not, not a long time passed by, but as Simon and Andrew, who were within the will of God to perform crucial work for the work of God, and as a large crowd, the more fallen Christ, who was preaching when they were in the uh, vicinity of the Lake Gennesaret, is incidentally, there were two Simon and Andrew. They were fishing all night. They had gather nothing and there was Jacob and John which is the sons of Zebedee and on that beach and now Jesus was trying to preach but he was prevented because of the large a large amount of people he asked permission from Simon to get on his boat in order to be able to preach to the people. And he got into his boat, and indeed he preached. And indeed, everybody heard the word of God. And Simon heard the word of the Lord. And when they finished, he said to Simon, Bring now the boat back to the deep. Into and Simon said, Simon answered, Master, we toil all night. We took nothing. But on your word, I will lend down the nets. It's unreasonable what you're telling me because we are fishing during the night. During daytime, no one is casting a net. But as I was listening to you speaking, something happened in me and I decided to try your own word, to be convinced to your own prompting and admonition. And as he obeyed to the encouragement of the Lord Jesus, and in, f in complete unreasonableness, he cast down the net because he had just put together in a net, he had set it together, he had set it together, all it was all out of the boat, it was already prepared for the next night, but he made a sacrifice now by. <coughs> because upon upon the word of the Lord make a sacrifice and he messed up his nets again because they were all sorted out for the next night of fishing and when he had done this then closed a large number of fish and the nets were breaking and then the signal of the partners in the other boat to come and help them and they came and filled both the boats so that they began to sink for the first time the word of God calls Simon to be here Simon the Peter 
with the, the thoughts, the body, the heart of Simon, son of Jonah. There was Simon, which, whose name means hey, but when he made a steadfast decision about the word of the Lord to try the word of the Lord, and then there was a new man that was born in him, Peter, that Christ had prophesied for him. You become Peter. Only Peter. And this happens though slowly. Upon the word of the Lord, he transformed himself by the word of the Lord. Simon, Peter, he enjoyed the fruition. of his obedience and he understood he understood he was somebody else now my life is changing thought Peter and he said depart from me for I am a sinful man O Lord he came to realize his sin as a he within him was starting to be born a new man as Simon was not dominating anymore in his existence but a new inner man whose name is Peter and the result is what they did is when they brought the, the boats to land they left everything and followed him and s Peter left everything and he followed Christ everywhere doing his earthly ministry. He saw his glory. Peter came to the realization of the truth. The time came for the will of God to be fulfilled because Christ, the Son, the Son of God who was God who became flesh he did not only come to preach the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven did not come only to bind the devil in order for the justifiably bound people to be set and released to be released and to be set free he didn't come just to teach people the sound teaching but his most significant mission was to surrender himself to the one to the one who judges righteously to give his holy blood so that all who believe in him will have eternal life whoever calls about the name of the Lord Jesus Christ the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ to cleanse that person and to be sanctified. He didn't come just for that, but he also came to reveal a revelation a resurrection from the dead. Not the resurrection of Lazarus, but a resurrection that leads to eternal life. And all the Lord Jesus Christ revealed to people. God through the Lord Jesus Christ. The, the resurrection that this body turns into imperishable body. The resurrection of the one who goes any way he wants to because he's not a fleshly man anymore or a natural man but he's resurrected to eternal life when he was arrested our Lord Jesus Christ <coughs> then gone he followed Christ Peter now in order to be revealed to him that was going to happen when he said to him well, I'm going to die, I'm going to rise again three days later. 
And he also denied it though three times according to the word of the Lord. But who? Simon Peter. Three times he denied him. Um, shocking. And the final time he even heard the rooster crowing. And after the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, Christ visited Peter and he restored him. Peter, who was ashamed, the only one who was afraid from the disciples of Christ who denied him. And Peter despised. That within that humility or actually humiliation that he experienced was a was a result of failing a trial of God as Simon and when he found himself after the resurrection uh, after the resurrection and Christ opened the minds of the disciples when he found himself according to the commandment of the Lord in Galilee Simon revealed himself again overruled Peter within his existence and I'm going to fish and Simon even managed to lead astray seven other disciples and Christ is going to visit him again to make a new start in his life. Simon Peter. He heard the voice from the shore, which he wasn't far. Do you, do you have anything to eat for breakfast? And they said to him, they said, no, Lord. Uh, we would say no mister we would say today because they didn't know who he was now cast the net to the right of the boat are you listening to me cast your net to the right of the boat disciple of love John said it is the Lord and the net was filled with fish again and Peter again first now first again he was dressed pay attention to this he dove into the water in order to go and meet the Lord first and now the Lord is has a few charcoals he's preparing f he's already grilling fish and Christ then asked the disciples, bring from the fish that you just caught. And Peter first went to the net, which was filled with 153 fish. And even though there were so many fish, it did not tore the net apart. And now his transformation starts again. Once they ate, Christ is going to reveal to him what he's going to do in his future. He said to Simon Peter, Simon Peter, do you love me more than these? Do you love me more than these? Lord, you know that I love you more than all these things. He replied exactly to the question of the Lord. And now the prophets of the Lord came because you love me more than these. Shepherd my lambs. At some point he had told him before, now you fish and fish. Now I'm going to make you 
a fisher of people, you Simon Peter, but now he's calling him, forget fishing. Now I'm going to make you a shepherd, the pastor. I'm going to make you shepherd my little sheep. But you have to love me more than anything else. Otherwise, he cannot do it. If you don't love me, the Christ, more than anything, we cannot tend my little sheep. You, you know what the Lord showed me? The Sunday school. L brother, if you don't love Christ, it cannot work. It's Sunday school. Isn't this amazing? And then the Lord asked him a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Simon, son of John, said, you know that I love you. Since you love me without any comparison, without looking to your left and to the right, the left, or the right, and without com now tend my large sheep. And then he asked him a third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And Peter was grieved. No, John and Peter, they're in conflict. There are two people. There is Yorgo, the, f the carnal George, and the spiritual George in all of us. For God to use you, the carnal George, you have to get smaller and die. And the spiritual George to increase. How do I understand this? By sowing. Why do I sow? To my carnal man or to my spiritual man that God does whatever he wants with them versus the carnal man that I do whatever I want to. And Peter replied the third time. Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. And then Jesus said to him, send the dominant word, feed my sheep. And you may know that God provides the word by which man will live. And the people need to be fed with the Word of God in order to be fed and grow and be edified. Everything has an end. No, when you were younger, you could do anything you wanted to. When you get older, your old age will be glorious that will take you and put you where you don't want to go, revealing to him the kind of death. And Simon Peter, the kind of death he was to glorify God. And then as Jesus departed, he gave him a commandment, remain in Jerusalem, to sort of receive power from on high. Once 500 disciples saw him ascending, only 120 people remained obedient to the upper room for the Pentecost. And there they fulfilled the work of God and transformation of God happened to the disciples. They were filled all in the Holy Spirit. Peter among them too. Once it started, 
to speak in foreign tongues. And everybody would hear them. Some were admiring. <coughs> and then it says something amazing in the Acts. And then Peter standing, which is amazing. God is Simon of Jonah. And Peter is no longer a fisher, even though he is. He's neither a shepherd who feeds the flock of sheep. But now he's apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ by the will of God the Father. Simon died. Now he's Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and undressed them. Men of Judea, and all who would dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you. Give ear to my words, for these people are not drunk as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel. Then in the last days it shall be, God declares, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. This is it. And now Peter is edifying the house of the Lord because within him is not dwelling Simon like in the case when in the resurrection of the Lord he asked him to to cast a net in the right of the boat Or, or in the case, the beginning of the Jesus in earthly ministry, after Jesus had declared the word from his boat, he asked him again to cast an, uh, to go in the deep and cast a net. But now, as a new man, as a regenerated man, I'll tell you a story now. Once a holy man of God had come to me evangelical brother why do you insist so much the baptism of the Holy Spirit and to speak in tongues and he said and I said to him I do not know to, be, to answer you but if you go go and ask the Lord uh, the Lord is going to reply to you. And then after three, four months, the Lord and after three, four months, I know now why you insist you insist on speaking in tongues, be baptized the Holy Spirit. You know, There is, I saw a dream, and within that well was, which I was, I was in my dream in the middle of my village, and back in those years, there was a well, and the well was the center of our life, because through the well we were washing ourselves, we were drinking water, and I found myself in that house, my father. We used to seal that well, so in order nothing dirty, or nothing would fall into it in order not to defile it with, with any animals falling in it. And one day I found it open. And I found and I found it to be to be and we found it to have a lot of water. I found I was, was looking at it. It was very dirty. It was were leaves, there were rugs, there were uh, p planks of wood. And I said, I need to cleanse it. 
and as I put a bucket in it when you put a bucket in it and you, and you know that I was trying to clean it with a bucket I couldn't clean it because I was lifting up the bucket all the trash would fall again back into the well and then I finally exclaimed to the Lord Lord please cleanse this well for me and when I heard when I said this I heard a buzzing noise and then I saw the water starting, all of a sudden coming l growing there was become a living water when it came up to the surface it just spilled a little bit of water and cleansed a little bit when the water of the well when the well spills over the water spills over the well it cleans up all the trash that is on the surface you know there is a glass of water here a regenerated person has water maybe it's filled with the Holy Spirit or half of it or just a little bit so he's so what is the baptism of the Holy Spirit is that this glass and this water starts streams water out of it as a fountain of water and when he said that to me that's the baptism of the water and I rejoiced I said Lord I had not received the Holy Spirit yet make me to be to be a stream of of water and the Lord baptized me after four years thus the Apostle Paul says be filled with the Holy Spirit with the fill of the Holy Spirit you're getting sanctified he cleanses us how am I gonna build the house of the Lord how am I gonna edify my Peter by speaking in unknown tongues is the one who edifies himself is it, is it that easy it's even easier because Christ does this for us thus dear brethren it's terrifying what the Lord is doing when he's baptized in the Holy Spirit when the Holy Spirit came when the Holy Spirit came to Saul he changed everything when the Lord baptized the Holy Spirit then the next day I was a new man my thoughts my words my manners my attitude my behavior I was a new man of course now I have the responsibility to sow and to sow where I'm going to sow where I'm going to plant <coughs> I'm going to sow the fleshly man. You know, if you don't take care of our own field, tears are going to grow up. And what does Christ say? You are my vineyard, and my father is the vine dresser. And when he finds tears, he pulls that out. And if the or if the vine is fruitless, God root plant roots it out, and it's useless with us a dry wood. So Haggai said, Go up and ascend the mountain and get the logs. Ah, I'm going to shake not only the earth, but also the heaven. I'm going to shake not only Simon and Jonah, but also Peter. Because everything that is shaken needs to be removed. Because on that mountain, the house of the Lord will be supported. The spiritual George is going to be supported, who is regenerated. Baptized the water, dressed Christ, 
baptized the Holy Spirit. He has power and authority to edify, to build a holy dwelling with gold, silver, and precious stones, with the filling of the Holy Spirit. How important it is to study the Word of God in honor for our promise to be evident. How important it is to be filled with the Holy Spirit, to pray with our mind, and to pray in the Spirit as well. Because the Word of the Lord. I want to read this from it's a And the Spirit understands our weaknesses as we don't know how to pray, but uh, the Holy Spirit intercedes with us with groanings which cannot be heard and with tongues that we don't understand because the mind is fruitless when we're feeling the Holy Spirit speaking in tongues. And the one God in the Spirit who intercedes according to the will of God, who prays for us, who intercedes for us, intercedes according to the will of God, the Father, according to the will of God. And then the Father, who is pleased at that point, he works everything together. To the ones who love God, the ones who are called according to the will of God the Father. And then the whole man becomes holier, especially in the latter days. The righteous, more righteous. The lawless, more lawless. The sinful man, more sinful. It is within our hands. Then we hear the word of the Lord. Today is the day of salvation. Today, let's not. You're sowing, you're not reaping. You're planting, you're trying, and you're making a mess. Ascend the mountain to receive power of faith through the Holy Spirit. Re assemble logs, cut them down. And build my house, my house, my dwelling, which is your body. Amen. <laughs> 